What is up guys, McDouble's back again with a brand new video, and today I've got Craig, and we're going to be doing a brand new version of tanking, bear tanking specifically, we're going to be doing corrupted bear form, using corruption and shadow bolt mixed with bear form with life gain, it's a pretty fun one, and I just wanted to highlight it with this video, so I hope you guys enjoy, let's jump right in. <laughs> So I started off my journey with an idea. What bear form is better? There are two that recently came out. Corrupted bear form, which is the shadow form bear form you see here, the main point of the entire video. But if you search bear form under enchants, there's actually quite a few. In fact, Carnage and Carnage actually came out right before Corrupted bear form. And it's not something that we've covered, although it is something that I've already played. Now, let me quickly show you what these two do. Corrupted bear form, first of all, reduces my physical damage by 30%, but on auto attack, I do additional high threat shadow damage. Damage. In tandem, if I'm in Corrupted Bear form, my Maul, which is like a heroic strike that you can just, you know, use and it goes off no matter what, and my Mangle, which is like a spammable, have a chance to apply Corruption. Both Maul and Mangle can be made into cleave abilities um, with Berserk and with Enrage, specifically. So, they're, they're not the best, but it can be made to cleave, and that's how you spread the Corruption. Now, similarly, if I swipe a target, which is a wonderful way to AoE, I'll actually drain life from targets afflicted by Corruption. So, you can see the innate synergy there. I'm actually going to be corrupting everything and then healing myself just by swiping. But it gets cooler because when I have Nightfall or Backlash talented, Shadow Bolts that I get will actually be usable while in Corrupted Bear form, but they will also hit up to two additional targets. Meaning with the right talents, I can actually use this for threat as well. And I can use it to pull and I can use it just to look cool. So there's a lot of things I'm excited about with that. Now the Nightfall talent specifically procs off Corruption and even though it looks like I'll be spreading a lot of corruptions, I don't think I'll be getting that one off as consistently. Backlash is a very simple destruction warlock talent that gives me a 25% chance when hit by a physical attack to make my next Shadow Bolt instant cast cost 50% less mana and do 10% more damage to monsters, so in PvE. Now, Again, with Corrupted Bear Form, they also hit up to two additional targets, making it very good for tanking. In some ways, I wish that alone was usable for, you know, non-Bear Form versions of the build, if that could exist, because I think that that's, in some ways, all you would really need for, like, a Drain Tank, for example, but I digress. I think Backlash is the best way to go. Now, on the flip side, we have the other Bear Form that I talked about called Carnage Incarnate, and this is a Bleed-based one. This transforms Rend, which is a very simple word, warrior bleed um, that you normally use for rend overpowered builds for example or mortal strike builds and what it does is it transforms it into a version of rend that is usable in bear form called carnage now it says when i have taste for blood which is a proc that comes from a rend tick i'm actually going to empower my next swipe to do additional threat and to draw blood from all enemies hit which is a stack that goes up to 12 times now the rend over time also procs the stack if i'm hit below 50 percent health i actually consume some of those stacks to heal myself but if I reach maximum stacks I actually encase myself in what I can only assume to be something similar to a wrath of the lich king bone shield so I encase myself in a shield of my enemy's blood and bones that protect me from damage heal me and damage all nearby enemies the real question is which one of these two bear forms that recently came out is better so what I'd like to do is first of all show you guys my one to basically 60 playthrough as Corrupted Bear Form. You'll be able to see how it played and also how it fares while leveling because as we all know, if you can't enjoy your tank while leveling, eh, well, you're probably not going to enjoy it at max, right? There's a lot of nuance to many of the tanks on Ascension and uh, they play wildly differently and you might not like them all. But what I also want to do at the very end is go over the Carnage Incarnate version of the build as well. We'll take that into a dungeon, we'll compare and contrast a little bit, and we'll just see how it goes. This is purely a highlight video for the sake of seeing the abilities, seeing how it works, seeing the roles, seeing how easy it is to get the things you need to be successful with both of these bear builds because they will share many of the same abilities even though they are supposed to be wildly different. Remember, it's still a bear tank, right? And you know what? We'll see at the very end, again, which one is better, Carnage Incarnate or Corrupted Bear Form. So without further ado, 
let's jump into it so because golden skill cards are unfortunately still a thing we could only start with half of the abilities that we needed and the rest we had to leave up the chance but we had to choose the right ones i hope i did although by the end of this particular playthrough you might disagree with me and honestly i might end up disagreeing with myself but let me just say i started off with shadow bolt bear form of course swipe and corruption just to get the core for how this specific build works in terms of my skill cards i was really pondering what was best but I did decide to go with Savage Defense, which can be very difficult to roll, and Enrage, because I believe the Enrage, specifically the Maul hitting multiple targets, therefore spreading corruption um, way easier than if I just had the single target tab to every target, I think that is core to how the build plays, and so that's what I went with. This does mean I gave up on guaranteeing the Berserk, and so what I'm doing is hoping at level 60, I can actually get the Berserk in the 60 rolls or whatever that I'm going to have it should be a sure thing if there's any hope in the world so yeah that was it we obviously start off in a 15 to 60 dungeon um, we are using an aura and i'm doing the rage fire chasm just to start us all off of course i don't really have much going for me right now as in this specific clip you'll notice i don't have the mall we do end up nailing the mall though so that is important to keep in mind but prior to that you can see one of the things you're going to suffer from if you try to play one of these bear tanks is just not getting the things that you need just to do the bare minimum and that's always the problem right all right i'm in stocks and what do we got nice finally growl we got a taunt guys i didn't even have a taunt you know there are so many little things you need so we'll definitely take that i will say even without the mall this is actually not going as bad as i thought it was going to go and that's because i can still play this as a regular druid from classic wow and i just rush in there and i spam swipe i mean that's basically how a druid plays i'm not gonna you know try to be mean about it but that's real right like it's very very simple i am regretting the uh, lack of berserk you know the more i think about it the more i think that was just wrong maybe savage defense wasn't that deep uh but hey i really do think that it's astronomically unlucky to not get the berserk if you choose no legendaries to not get it at 60 with 60 plus rolls actually is just wrong right so let's have some hope and nah, yes mall dude that's what i need that is what I need. So now that I have the maul, I can use the enrage to allow my maul to cleave. And when my maul hits a target, it applies corruption. And when I swipe the corrupted targets, I should get healed. So let's actually try that for the first time. All right, look at this. Look at this. I'm swiping, I'm mauling. I have the enrage up. Look at all that damage. And all those plus 24s you see, that's the healing I'm actually getting from the swipe. So we need to make that happen again. All right, what do we got? survival instincts okay last stand but for cat and bear druids uh that's very interesting 30 percent of my max health i'll take it okay we are entering scarlet monastery i want to show you guys how this works again so uh first of all i mauled my target you can see the corruption and uh now if i swipe there you go plus 25 right so 24 25 ish that's what i'm getting right now i will say 24 or 25 health on every swipe for every target that has corruption on it is really really good at this level and i'm very curious to see what it's going to be like at max um there we go we died right but anyway we have a thousand or so hp and so we're roughly getting like maybe two percent of our health back you know for every target though that we swipe that's actually a lot, you know, if you get 2% health back for every target swiped, that can really rack it up, but you've really got to spread the corruption, and that's something that we have to figure out. Three targets is not a lot, right, and that's all we're getting with the mall, and that's what really gets me back to the berserk. Berserk spamming the mangle, that would have been a really good way to keep the corruption up on multiple targets more consistently. One thing I noticed is that we started to fall into a groove with this build, and the groove was, I was essentially unkillable what was holding me back was my gear plain and simple but if i had even remotely decent gear i think i could damn near solo this place if i had one other person to do some damage maybe a fan of knives or right um this would probably be a very good tank to use if you didn't even want to look for a healer for a 15 to 60 so that's something to keep in mind as well but what we ended up doing was, despite the gear differences, we got into a bit of a groove, and uh, we were just pulling very liberally. I'm getting all the health back constantly from the swipes, and uh, I actually do really good damage as well. I'm actually not last place. I'm beating one of the DPS. 
One thing I will say in retrospect is that later on, I'll be in first place DPS a lot of the time as well. Bear Druids are notorious for being pretty good in that regard, I think. All right, let's do it again, but this time let's do it right. I'm going to put Corruption up on a couple targets, and we'll get to the swiping. All right, you can see the plus 28, by the way. That's a lot of extra health coming from literally nothing but swipe. One thing I'm really looking forward to, though, is the instant cast Shadow Bolts. I think that's really going to be a really big deal. I think we're going to be able to pull with it very consistently. I think it's going to round everything out we'll just have to find a way to not go oom but maybe if we get seal of wisdom or something it won't be that bad or something like that right can't really life tap in bear form but nonetheless all right what do we got ghost wolf ghostly strike searing pain that's crap searing pain it is so this is where you start to see that if the numbers were tuned up a bit that it could actually be pretty nutty um yeah once again you get those corruptions up on everybody right i've got the enrage up here i've got them all going and then i just spam swipe the damage is actually actually kind of ridiculous and the healing actually is as well um but it does leave me wondering how is this that different from regular bear druids at the moment right i mean besides the corruption ticking maybe the shadow bolt will truly change it but i am very curious about that because if you just add an extra ability to the rotation it doesn't really feel that different i will say right now i don't feel that different from a regular bear druid who just spam swipe except now my swipe is all you know drainy right i don't know i mean that, that's what it is my swipe is all drainy so i mean i guess we'll figure it out with the shadow bolt if it truly changes things i guess where i'm really left at is am i going to have to go into warlock talents to really make this build shine or do i just build the exact freaking same and i think that's something we'll be able to see as well when comparing the carnage incarnate build with this version of the build if they have to build incredibly similar except for a few talents like taste for blood for carnage incarnate and maybe nightfall backlash for you know corrupted bear form if they only have to build a little different with those nuances that's probably not the best design but if i can actually find a way and it's an optimal way let's say or a near optimal way to build these guys that isn't a carbon copy of the other outside of the nuance i think that we can say safely that it's a pretty well designed tank class i think by default if you're a druid player let's say you're one of the few people on the planet that you know druid tanking was your forte and i say few not because i'm downing it but because very few people like tanking and then very few people are gonna like one specific thing within tanking right so you have to keep that in mind i'm just dying like crazy here it's so annoying we don't have any gear and my group is scuffed i don't know these guys it was totally scuffed man we didn't go in here with pots man we just went and i, I said you know what it's late at night you can see it's 12 a.m i said screw it let me just get through this. Let me level as much as I can. But anyway, um, as I was saying, we'll see, I guess, at max it, how much these two builds truly differentiate from just being a regular bear druid and also how much they differentiate from each other. <laughs> oh, yes. I think you guys know that one of the reasons I enjoy tanking, especially while leveling, is because you just get to spam AoE and have a bunch of numbers on your screen. And that's fun. I think we can all agree. A bunch of numbers on your screen is fun in World of Warcraft. So that's basically what i'm doing spamming the corruption very little to worry about but as you can see based on this animation i finally got the instant cast shadow bolts and i've got them through the backlash talent that we spoke about earlier in the video so now i can actually pull with the shadow bolts and i just want to show you guys this gameplay in the background with the shadow bolt pulls with the corruptions going up with the swipe spam this is how the build is supposed to play and i like my little weak rs for it as well it's very nuanced you don't have to have any massive crap in your face it's just two little you know purplish pink lines on either side of my bear that signifies that i get a free shadow bolt it hits three targets and that's been really really nice for me it does feel good it feels powerful you know shooting the shadow bolts out hits multiple targets you get that aggro back um and i think to myself if i had righteous fury which is a spell that gives me extra threat on magic spell effects right so specifically with my shadow spells if i had the righteous fury would the shadow bolt be 10 times better and i think it would right i think it definitely would i think we could evade threat problems through bear form and righteous fury but nailing everything you need once again for tanks um way better than it used to be we'll give it a big thumbs up for what it used to be love it think it's so much better and that if you actually really enjoy tanking it's probably not that bad but still not obviously super easy not you know i'm not 
calling for changes, but I'm just being honest, it's not super easy. If I need the Righteous Fury, I need the Berserk, I need a bunch of damage cooldowns right now, I need a bunch of stuff, you know, to make this a truly good build, because the tank is not like the DPS, where if you're missing a few things, it's not that deep. You know, you might pull a few hundred DPS less, but it's not that deep. The tank is one of those things where if you don't have a few abilities, you are just a detriment to your to everybody in your party and your healer is going to be very anxious the entire time so that's important to keep in mind if you're just thinking about other people's feelings but you can see true shot aura innervate garbage eagle eye travel form ancestral spirit also garbage i'll take the you know the res i guess um but we did actually get the aegis of the scarlet commander that's a pretty cool one i am using a sword and shield with my bear form just for the extra armor i don't know if that's better than a 2h but i have an idea that it is uh because the armor right it's just a crazy amount of armor but you can see we have the nightfall six percent chance on corruption to get a free shadow bolt i'm not getting that as much as i thought i would so i am thinking about getting rid of the nightfall at some point and just going with backlash because i think backlash is consistent enough but i guess it's to be seen right so you might notice that we're in soul for rock and anybody that actually plays ascension watching right now is wondering what the hell went wrong with my 15 to 60 i told you it was scuffed man um, so we go into the ZF, and if you don't know, you don't want to do ZF 15 to 60, because the dungeon is just long. It's not that you don't get a bunch of XP, it's just that you can get XP faster just by going Maradon Purple Crystals. It's very, very simple. You take one quest off the head to pick up little, well, I think they're actually called crystals, right? Um, off all of the mobs, and then you go and you kill, like, the one boss that you have to kill, and bada bing, bada boom, you're ready for, uh, Blackrock Prison, whatever. So that's interesting that we chose ZF. It wasn't obviously my choice, but at this point, it's so late at night and we're taking it so slow and we are dying because none of us have gear and so i'm just i'm just saying okay i'm giving you a little bit of a pretense to what the hell is going on right now but one thing you will be able to see a lot of is the way the build plays the shadow bolt pulls um are very good we start off obviously way too weak for this dungeon we are way under leveled everything's 44 45 46 your tank is 42 with no gear obviously that's one of the stupidest things you can do but as we progress and the levels go up it really does just get a hell of a lot easier. And the build starts to shine, actually, in some ways as well. So as we got levels, as I said, it became really, really easy. I did notice I'm just spamming swipe because nothing else even matters. But I was able to pull very far off packs with the Shadow Bolt. And when the pulls got big, spam that corruption and therefore spam pretty decent heals on myself through the swipe. You can see the plus 48s right now, so it is going up pretty considerably. That is the swipe heal. And because we all know what we were looking looking forward to when we run zf it's this moment at the bottom of what what would you call it a necropolis a ziggurat um you know obviously i'm just going to pull every single mob obviously and it's freaking amazing the swipe spam is great but it <laughs> it is just swipe spam though not gonna lie so look at this, this is just a fall from grace. I think a lot of us here probably played during the classic, uh, you know, just, uh, what would you call it? Just everybody was so excited. It was a fervor, right? It was a fad. I mean, nobody gives a crap about classic anymore. Like, what you have left on TBC Classic and, uh, you know, Season of Mastery are the people that would have played classic no matter what, even if it was bug-ridden, even if it was awful, because they're addicted to it for reasons that aren't the gameplay. They're addicted to it because of their guilds, or they're addicted to it because maybe, I don't know, maybe just classic specifically just strikes their fancy but look at the edge masters hand guards here let me just go back to that what the hell is that fall from grace this was good in classic this is complete doo-doo butter right now <laughs> it's just awful man and uh by the way reaching those hit caps with some of my newfound knowledge coming from these random enchants that i completely forgot about like precision like balance of power that give two percent hit a lot of pro builds are using both right but edge master's hand guards kind of falls from grace even more as a direct result of it because that's just doo-doo i just had to point that out i really really love how ascension made a lot of gear good and i know that they're still making bad gear better um and you know what bring my boy edge master's hand guards back <laughs> you know bring it back but anyway we're in black rock depths prison it's super easy i want to show you guys some of the bigger pulls with the corruption with the shadow bolts mix in you'll see it in the background right now it's actually a whole lot of fun and what i want to do right after this is just jump into max level stuff we actually stop at 55 because the group is scuffed obviously one random guy leaves and then everybody's like 
peeling out. I immediately left as soon as I found the opportunity. So what I did is I reached level 60 in a BG real quick, super, super quickly. And now what you'll see right here is me at max. So here we are caught up to the present. And I do just want to say I am probably the unluckiest person on the planet. I think this is true, right? I mean, let's really be real. You've all seen my roles, okay? You know this is not normal, right? You know, okay? I didn't get the berserk. I just didn't. I did roll 60 plus times, and I didn't get the berserk, but it actually is worse than that, if you can believe it. Because I didn't get a single thing outside of frenzied regeneration, which by itself is not even remotely good enough. Not even semi good enough. Not even semi kind of remotely good enough. It's actually depressing. <laughs> so we are definitely scuffed. Okay. And I'm dead serious. Look at my marks. I got zero. Okay. I spent it to the T even did extra dailies to get these marks uh, for the hands of fate. And, and you know what? I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. What I want to say is what you see right here with my abilities, even though it looks like I only have enough abilities to be level 25. <laughs> It, this is it and so we're gonna have to give it a go But I think this is good because I, I always like to make light of when things go bad because if I'm honest What it does is it shows you if you want to play shadow bear You are most likely coming out of it with a better build than what I've got So if I can succeed at all you will succeed period and I like to give people hope I think that all of us could use a little bit more hope in the world, right? So even on the littlest things So what we're gonna do now is just jump into a dungeon at max level Probably just a heroic and I'm gonna actually finish this build up as well at the end of the video I will just have all of the builds um, Just I'll remind you guys in the description below both for carnage incarnate and for the corrupted bear form I won't go over them in great detail just so we can avoid going over talents Excessively in every video, but like I said, it's in my discord under ascension wow builds I have a bunch of builds uh, and they're pretty decent. They're pretty good in a lot of cases as well So you could pick those up mix and match make up your own crap use them as a foundation or copy them completely whatever makes you happy so let me go ahead and fix my build up and uh, we'll jump into a dungeon and then we'll do some carnage incarnate as well okay i've picked two relatively simple dungeons in my opinion to showcase both of these builds in this one of course we're starting off with the one that the whole video is based off of the corrupted bear form and we're doing dire mall north a tribute run and just take a look at this so one of the things I'm noticing, and I have noticed, in fact, as I leveled with this, is that aggro is a serious problem. And obviously, when you're low on gear and some of the people you're with are just obviously they're doing their pew pew, massive damage, DPS builds, melee, you can see the DPS chart, right? It's going to be hard to hold aggro. But I think when you get your physical damage reduced by 30% with a bear build, and um, your ways of proccing the magic effects that are supposed to be upkeeping your aggro are kind of sketch. At best, I guess is the best way to put it. I mean, it's on a cleave with the mall. It's on a cleave with the berserk, which I don't have. It, it's, you know, mall is in and of itself a weird kind of wonky ability. I think it's a little iffy. You remember, I'm only getting shadow damage on my auto attacks, not on my swipe, not on my mangle, technically on my mall, but not really at the same time. So, not on my lacerate that I happen to have. So, it's a little weird. In terms of damage mitigation, absolutely no issues though. So, you know, when I get my combo up, when the corruption's going, when the shadow bolts are going, which, by the way, I barely got any procs for this entire time, nor did I ever feel the need to shadow bolt as well. So it's a little weird at that point, right? Um, it almost feels like I have this legendary enchant giving me shadow powers, but it's inconsequential. So I'm kind of hoping they add more to it, to be honest with you, because the more I play it, the more I feel like it's not finished yet. It's like a half concept, but it's not a full concept yet. You know, bear form is kind of weak for from what I've heard people aren't doing it as much in high mythic uh, plus let's say and so as a result of that you kind of want to give the enchants that come out for it some oomph some power that's just my opinion but between being able to charge in every pack and start spamming the swipe or getting off the cleave mall I've never really felt the need for the shadow bolt um, and I guess with the righteous fury it would be a really big way to hold aggro but of course without it it almost felt pointless so I'd like to see a little bit better stuff coming out of that but the dire mall north was very easy one of the reasons 
reasons why it was easy was because we had this fiddler guy who was just pulling way more dps than he needs to be pulling for heroics right so that's pretty good um so he kind of carried in terms of the damage but of course i know the routes i know what i'm doing you know i've done dire mall north and i love it because it's a quick dungeon you know it's it's exactly what i want from a dungeon because you get to skip the trash trash is so pointless in raids and dungeons it actually feels like they're insulting me when i have to fight trash you know like i'm talking about blizzard themselves or i guess in this case ascension but it's blizzard's fault they created it right uh, but as far as i'm concerned when i have to kill pointless trash that gives me nothing it's like you're just wasting my time put me on the boss with the mechanics you know and that's what i get to do with dm north i get to go straight to gordok you have to use your brain you know obviously you don't want to know it but let's pretend it was your first time doing north and trying to do tribute runs people used to actually get the ogre suit you know what i mean like it's just cool i like it and i think that the build did decent as a bear build i don't think it did decent as a special shadow bear build though i think that's where the disappointment lies i mean we're still going to be comparing this to carnage incarnate in a second in heroic of its own um we're going to do a prison run heroic because it's another quick one where you can just immediately see how the build performs i think that if you're ever trying to test your tank build or your dps build you should focus on queuing for specifically things like dm north and prison because they're quick and they're basically one boss dungeons because they also test every aspect of your build they test your ability to do small cleave pulls they test your ability to do massive aoe pulls and then they obviously test your ability to do single target on the bosses so it's everything you need to have a genuine test with other players and their buffs to see how your build does and that's why i chose them right so i finally guided my team to uh king gordok and i won't lie it was a bit of a hassle it turns out that one of the guys ended up taking 10 years to get here because they just died on their way in so all of us were just waiting for them right outside gordok and <laughs> and then when they spawned back at the entrance they died again <laughs> it's just we had to keep waiting and so i'm rolling my eyes and waiting but we finally make it to the gordok fight this is the only fight in the entire dungeon that i thought to use shadow bolt on because i just had nothing else to do i mean aggro on specifically gordok was difficult but not impossible i won't lie you'll notice throughout the fight i'm just straight up losing aggro it's really hard i'm trying to keep up the lacerate at times as well i'm taunting consistently i'm even using the feral fairy fire right which i didn't point out that i had but i do it's a pseudo taunt to some degree and uh, i was trying to spread the corruption in fact this went so badly that we almost killed cho rush right the aoe actually almost killed cho rush and if you don't know if you kill the little guy and not just gordok you don't get any of the tribute loot which is the main point of dm north in my opinion and so yeah it's just interesting to me that the entire king gordok fight besides the one backlash shadow bolt i just didn't even feel like a shadow bear i felt like a bear a handicapped bear and so i'm excited to show you guys carnage incarnate after this because i'll just give a spoiler it performs a lot better and um i think you guys will like it more too it's actually very crazy the difference in just in just in terms of how smooth it is don't get me wrong incarnate also feels like it's not done yet that's a little weird to me ascension actually tends to have a habit of making things too complex which i think most of us would agree too complex is way better than not complex enough and so i don't think anybody ever complains about that we just say get over it and if you want to play something complex then hey you have things to do uh but actually in some ways it looks like that they stopped themselves from going too far with both of these bear enchants almost like they were afraid to keep going and uh, maybe that's because there's a hidden build out there that the devs know about that makes them broken and not just flavorful but as far as i can see it's just something to do for both of the specs even though carnage incarnate will be better like i said um just something to do if you want to play something different not just bear tank right um maybe you have been playing plague bearer which is another version of bear tank that i actually think is very well designed maybe you've been playing that one for a really long time and now you want to jump to something different because you're a bear druid tank and i think that these are great for that but if you're looking for something that's both uniquely good and that feels genuinely different i don't think corrupted bear form actually hit the nail on the head and i think the king gordok fight kind of showed that as well constantly losing aggro and uh if as you're watching, I bet you barely saw a difference besides me being in bear shadow form uh, between this and just playing a regular bear. 
All right, boys, round two, and we're going to be playing, as you know, Carnage Incarnate, which means I have a brand new little Rend Bleed ability, which you can see right here, and by putting it on my target and then playing the game, I build up stacks, the stacks can pop, the stacks heal me, and if I get enough stacks, I get a Bone Shield, which does some cute little, you know, damage mitigating things as well. It actually is more physically based, and as a result, I think I'll probably have a lot less issues with aggro. So one thing I do want to go ahead and show you guys are the stacks, so you can see all the way up here consume blood consuming one stack to heal while below 50% max health so when I'm below 50% max health I can consume a stack to heal myself if I never go below 50% max health I simply build the stacks until I get my bone shield one thing you'll notice is that I can chain pull back to back and I have absolutely no issues with it uh, the build as I predicted because I'm not getting my physical damage reduced I'm not being hampered as much with my threat I had no issues this entire run with threat and that should tell you something because the DP Yes, was a little bit higher quality overall and uh, that in theory should make it harder but it simply wasn't so that's a very big thing to keep in mind I've also not gone into a bunch of damaged talents so it's not like I had to get a bunch of extra stuff in order to maintain my aggro this is actually almost entirely mitigation again the talents are in the uh, description in theory right you have to go to my discord so you'll see it there but the fact of the matter is, it just performed better. Now, I won't lie, you don't notice it as much. It does feel like you're playing a regular druid. Uh, tank, that is. But if you know, if you spam the rand on multiple guys, you get the stacks a little bit faster, you spend the taste of blood procs with the swipes, and uh, you proc the bone shield. And I think, actually, that with all the blood swirling around me and stuff, I actually felt more engulfed in this one, more different with this one, than I did with the one that put me in shadow bear form, because once again outside of my measly auto attacks occasionally doing extra shadow threats what else was it right with the shadow bear form that was special at least visually speaking literally nothing but this one at least has little red bloody swirls and as you saw even though it's heroic and I'm in full PvP gear as a tank, I just chain pulled back to back to back to back, never had an issue, and easily held threat. So I do think, based on that alone, that Carnage Incarnate just performs better. And again, feel is a big deal. I went into my Dire Mall North and it didn't feel good, but I was good enough and knew the mechanics enough to get through it because it's just a heroic DM North. But I get into Heroic Prison and immediately I feel like I have power. I feel like I could run us through the entire dungeon never lose aggro and everybody would be like pming me because they're like hey man i gotta get with you in the future i you know if you ever want to tank something for me i'll i got you you know something like that you know and it just wasn't working out right with the corrupted bear form so yeah as far as i'm concerned this is a perfect indicator that the carnage incarnate build is probably just better right now um and it just fits better with the bear form mold so based on those last two dungeons it looks like carnage incarnate is just better i mean it really feels like it in every way and let me explain what i mean first of all once again carnage incarnate transforms rend into rend carnage which gives me this ability which is pretty good it could be used in bear form and if i consume taste for blood which just occurs off of one of these rend or carnage rend procs i will get a stack and you saw those stacks in the dungeon they build up and then um, at below 50%, they will basically pop and I'm going to get more health. And that's been pretty fun. Now, the main thing that makes this build different from the Corrupted Bear Form build is that it's still physically based. Remember, when I use the Corrupted Bear Form, as you can see, it reduces all of my physical damage by 30%. I noticed that the threat I was getting from my, you know, melee attacks having additional high threat shadow damage wasn't making up for that. Not only that, but Corruption and Shadow Bolt weren't making up for it either. Now, maybe with the Righteous Fury, it would make a bigger difference, but I can't see by how much because the healing actually almost seemed worse with Corrupted Bear form than it felt with this one, which is not even entirely healing based. I'm going to make sure that this spec is in my Discord because this one for Carnage Incarnate is actually pretty good. I think that it could be better, but it would entirely rely on me getting better abilities, right? So for what I have, the talent build is basically perfect. So it's a really good foundation if you're just trying to play Bear Druid specifically. Let's see what we get from this. This. Let's do agility, coal miner boots. Um, okay, yeah, that'll probably replace my wild heart. I was using a six piece wild heart just to get that uh, last bit of the set bonus, random chance to get rage, energy, or mana. So, in my case, two of the three are pretty decent, specifically if I'm doing the corrupted bear form. But yeah, I do think the biggest problem is that everything you have is physical. So, when you use corrupted bear form, especially when you're first gearing, um, it's just bad. And I think the only way to make it better 
is to basically make it to where Maul and Mangle and Swipe also deal additional high threat shadow damage. I think that's actually essential. I'm surprised it's not there. I won't lie, Corrupted Bear Form feels like it's not finished yet. That's my critique. Um, I do think Carnage Incarnate is not particularly crazy unique at the same time. It's just Bear Druid with an extra little bleed mechanic. Now I will say, as I was alluding to earlier in the video, if you like Bear Druid, you will like both of these specs because it's just an extra spin on a spec you already like. If you're just a tank player though and you're looking for something fun and unique, I will say Carnage Incarnate might grasp you for a second because that one new ability always good, right? When you transform something into a new ability. But you might feel a little left to the wayside with Corrupted Bear Form, I guess, because once again, everything is physically based, abilities can be very difficult to obtain, and you're only getting additional high threat shadow damage on melee attacks, which I guess procs off the maul theoretically based on that alone, but I'd like to see it on the mangle and on the maul and on the swipe. I'd like to see it on everything, in fact. Uh, make it a true hybrid pseudo caster shadow bear tank uh that's what i'd like to see personally maybe an extra mechanic in there as well because here's the thing the corruption it's just simply not very reliable i mean maul is already wonky because it goes off auto attack right so that's your main way of getting corruption up besides berserk and mangle but berserk's on a really long cooldown and mangle only hits one target on a six second cooldown outside of the berserk so basically you're relying on the enrage and the maul to get your corruption up and then it only goes on three targets and so you have to tab target and then hope that off the tab target, your Maul Cleave hits two extra targets on top of the one you just tab targeted to that don't have corruption up on them, and then you want to swipe. So I think there's just too many limitations to the cleave. I think that's something that Bear desperately suffers from. Some of the things I've noticed that you'd want is that you might want Titan's Grip to use a 2H weapon and uh, get those extra stats because you don't really care as much about, you know, the downsides of it, and then use a shield as well. So that might be something you want to shoot for, but that's only with the Carnage and Carnage version of the build when I look more at this I mean would you want to use a staff and a shield because I'm pretty sure you can actually with Titan's grip so it's just an interesting thing to think about but I'm just not too sure I think a combination of the RE just not feeling like it's fully done yet uh, on top of the fact that it's going to be very difficult to build a bear form hybrid is just a little out of place at the moment and I think that they're going to probably fix this one up a bit because once again 6% chance on the corruption tick for a shadow bolt that's not reliable enrage maul and berserk uh, mangle cleave just to get the corruption up so that you can actually play the build that's extremely unreliable I'd like to see more reliability and I'd like to see more additional high threat shadow damage on my spells um, that's personally what I'd like to see well what do you guys think I mean you got to see a quick snippet of carnage incarnate and you got to see the whole shebang for corrupted bear form personally carnage incarnate i think it's better which is just a little sad to say because this whole video was hoping that the corrupted bear form would be the best but i think corrupted bear form has a ridiculous amount of potential and i know that they're coming out with tank changes soon that's going to eliminate hopefully eliminate at least dramatically reduce the importance of threat and then heighten the importance of cooldown management positioning and just overall being a leader which by the way is not bullshit because you have to know all the dungeons and all the right ways to go in the dungeon and you have to lead your team and that's a big deal that a lot of people don't want to have to take the pressure of but maybe more will if they don't have to worry as much about just holding aggro from all these crazy high dps builds out there especially the melee ones remember it's essentially is classless it's way more complex there's much more going on and it's way harder for a tank as a result but anyway guys if you enjoy the video make sure to give it a like and subscribe to bear tank builds one video both in the description below like i said if you enjoyed like and subscribe but i'll see you in the next one mcdoubles out